Few cars on the market today have the heritage of the Chevrolet Impala. This nameplate has been offered on and off for over 50 years. This version of the car, it's a large front wheel drive sedan. It's based on a platform that dates back to the late 80s. Now having a long history is one thing, but having an up to date car is another. So how's the Impala doing? One way the Impala is definitely out of date is in its drivetrain. This is one of the last pushrod V6s you can buy. The 3.5 liter, but it doesn't really provide much more power than most four cylinders. Fuel economy is not all that impressive. Part of that is because the Impala is using a four speed automatic. Most modern sedans, they're using a five speed or a six speed or a CVT. However you look at it, the drivetrain, definitely behind the times. You can say the same about handling. The Impala feels clumsy. There's quite a bit of body lean and there's not much steering feedback. Steep body roll and slow steering didn't really help the Impala around our track either. But pretty good grip and standard stability control did keep the Impala secure. The Impala suspension is unsettled. Now there is some absorption of bumps here, but there's a lot of rocking and bobbing. It's not a well controlled ride. The Impala is reasonably quiet inside, but some wind and road noise are apparent. The thing is, most big American sedans are quieter inside than this. When you think big American sedan, you think roomy rear seat. Unfortunately, the Impala doesn't have one. Getting in the back, it's tough. There's a small entryway. Once you're back here, the seat cushion's not all that comfortable. There's just adequate headroom, not a lot of legroom or tow room. There are many smaller sedans that have a much roomier rear seat than this. The big, firm, flat front seats, they don't do much to hold you in place in the corners. Another thing. Our test Impala cost over $29,000 sticker price. Now, it has a luxury package. Despite that, the recline for the front seats, it's manual. It's not power. That seems kind of cheap. Another big disappointment for the price is interior fit and finish. Sure, the dashboard's padded and the switch gear has pretty good tactile feel, but there's big gaps between a lot of panels and a lot of the edges aren't well finished. Another shortcoming, the steering wheel doesn't telescope. It only tilts. A telescope steering wheel, that's standard in almost every modern family sedan. One good thing though is that the Impala's controls are pretty simple. This radio, it's easy to use high up in the dash. A complaint though, these slide and climate controls are finicky. Hard to adjust them, especially when you're moving. One other interior annoyance is there's no gear indicator next to the shift lever. There's one in the dashboard, but there should be one next to the shift lever too. Probably the biggest advantage of the Impala is that it has a big trunk. You can fit five full-size suitcases in here, and if you need room for more, the back seat folds flat. So the Impala's big trunk might be an asset when you rent it on your next business trip, but this car just doesn't offer much to the buyer. Even though it has a V6, a lot of four-cylinder family sedans, they're faster, and they're a lot cheaper. And even though this car is big outside, it's small inside. In other words, most family sedans, they offer a lot more than the Impala, including Chevrolet's own Malibu.